you've decided to try exploring creation with mathematics, that's great, I'm excited for you. And now you're trying to sort out which level is right for your child. I get this question a lot, so let me give you as much help as I can. First things first, exploring creation with mathematics is leveled in a way that is very simple. So the level corresponds with the grade. So level five is a traditional fifth grade year of math, and that's how it works for level one, level two, just so you know that. Most kids take one year to complete one level. Also, I designed the program to be pretty much on grade level. I didn't wanna make it more advanced. It's not remedial. I try to keep it true to that level. And then I thought you as a parent can decide if your child should be moved up or moved down to review that type of thing. Okay, but that is how it is level. All right, now, um, a lot of you are switching in from other programs. And first of all, I really appreciate that you're checking out Apology of Math and that you're thinking about it. So thank you. Also, you should know that of course, we designed the program to build level one, level two, level three, level four, level five, but we also took into account that there would be families that would jump in midstream. So we thought about you, we planned for you. So I just don't want you to be overly concerned about changing things up. We're glad you're here. How do you pick the right level? Well, the first thing you should do is go to Apologia's website and check out the placement guide that they created. I have it linked below as well. It's the best place to start. We list what's covered in each level and you as the parent can assess, does your child know that skill? Are they confident in that skill? And it lets you see it all laid out. Sometimes parents even compare that with other programs if they're debating between two different programs, that type of thing. It's just a great bird's eye view. So that's the placement guide. The other thing that I'd recommend you check out is I have made video overviews of all the levels. So some parents find that helpful as well to watch a flip through and just kind of see it right, to really see inside the book and get a sense of what the year would look like. In addition to my flip throughs, I'm gonna link some other people's flip throughs because some of these are just fabulous. They did a great job. And so you can go watch somebody else's flip through and maybe you'd rather watch somebody else than me, the author. I totally respect that. Okay. Now I just want to address sometimes you find, you feel your kid is between two levels. You're not the only one. I get this message from parents. They are right in the middle or I'm not sure how do I handle this? They know some of level four, but not all of it. What do I do? Well, first of all, little pep talk, you as the homeschool parent, always are the best person to make that decision. You know your kid, you know how they're wired, how much drive they're bringing to the table. So, you know, I just wanna affirm that you are the best person to make the decision, but here are some things to consider. One, and this is just my opinion, if your child knows more than 50% of what is covered in a level, definitely consider bumping them up. I'm not saying all the time, but I think sometimes as parents, we are very hesitant to push a kid up because we're worried they'll miss something. And what can happen is they can get bored and it's a very long year and they actually don't learn as much as they could, not just because they weren't on the higher level, but because there was so much of a lack of challenge that they weren't very motivated. So just be careful about being overly careful. <laughs> okay, so that's sort of the over 50%. If you're under 50%, yeah, you really need to weigh things. You're probably gonna bump them down. Some parents have gone to the lower level and they've moved more quickly, skipped chapters of things that they already knew. I know one mom said they didn't do the projects and they kind of jumped around and they got through it maybe in half a year just to make sure there weren't any gaps, right? This is the beauty of homeschooling. You can adapt. If you do jump up, one thing to consider is how you're going to fill in gaps. And I would definitely recommend that you look at the skills practice for the previous level. So every level has the student book, that's the spiral bound one, and the teaching guide. And in the teaching guide, there's something called the daily skills practice. It's right in the front and it's certain skills that the kids continue to review throughout the year. Okay, so you want to look at that for the previous level. So if your child really doesn't know how to add and subtract decimals or, you know, you're thinking of them putting them in level three and they're not really strong on adding and subtracting with regrouping, that's something you want to review and shore up before you start. The levels do overlap to some degree, but that's just me trying to position you for success. I'm gonna link up, I actually made videos for the skills practice for each level. So you can click on those and go see kind of what was in the level without having to buy it. So those are my thoughts. Please feel free to comment, send in questions. I hope that is helpful. And thanks so much for choosing Apology of Math.